All right, so you can see I've got my two color wheels on this page set up for my colored pencils, or my watercolors rather. And I've got this one's going to be my red, blue, and yellow color wheel over here. And this one over here, I'm going to use all the colors I have in my spectrum and figure out where they belong in the color wheel. So let's start with the, the first one. Um, this is this is one of those times where you you know less is more. Um, start off with a little bit of little bit of color, a um, little bit of water, and then brushing that color from the uh, watercolors. The less water you use, the more saturated the color is going to be. So there's my red, and I just washed my um, my brush thoroughly in my water. And there's yellow. And I'm going to go over and do a second pass of these, but i got to let it dry for a little bit. So I'm just doing the others while I do that. And while we're waiting for those to dry, and that might be just a little bit too much pigment I'm picking up there. I've got to be careful not to put too much down. And um, there's my blue. Okay, so I'm going to let those dry. And then I'm going to start doing my full watercolor um, color wheel over here using all the colors in my color spectrum and using the actual colors that are supposed to represent the um, secondary colors rather than blending. So we'll put them in the same position red really thoroughly clean that brush so we don't contaminate the other colors for now yellow and blue and then I want in the other positions here I've got orange here is going to go between whoops I need a little bit more pigment there between the red and the yellow. And then between the yellow and the blue, I'm going to use the green. And then between the blue and the red, I'm going to place this violet. And I think probably we've had enough time for this to dry over here. You can see I'm not picking up any pigment anymore. So we can go back to our first color wheel. Let these dry over here. And we're going to see how, how different these um, representations of our orange and green and violet come out um, when we blend the, the actual colors. So for um, orange, I'm going to blend a little bit of well, first of all, let me just make this red a little bit more intense. And then I'm going to start with red. And then I'm going to wash my, my brush and mix the yellow. So I've got a little bit of yellow pigment on my brush and I mixed it in while the red was still wet. You've got to be able to mix while it's still wet. Looks like I got a drop of green on that one accidentally. Um, so then I want to mix blue and red together. So we'll start with red. I don't think it much matters what you start with. Really clean that brush off so you're not contaminating the blue. And then go to blue. And I might have grabbed a little bit too much blue there. So I'm just going to kind of spread this out a little bit more and add more red to it. So I don't want one to overpower the other. That's becoming a little bit more purple. And I think I need still a little bit more red. Every time I'm cleaning my brush off so I'm not contaminating that color. That's better. So I just uh, had a little bit too much color saturated on that one. And then the last one we'll do green by using blue. There's blue and yellow. great green. And when you're done, I want you to look at the comparisons between the two um, uh, color wheels. This has got what I call like a more um, acidic look to the color. It's, it's, it's um, kind of a really bright, non-natural green. And this green 
doesn't blend as well with some of the other colors um, as as uh, the green that's over here. This green maybe is a little bit more of a blue green. I might have a little bit more blue in there than yellow. Let's see what happens when we change it. But one of the things you're going to notice that happens is um, this color is going to end up being a little bit more neutral because we're using two of the pure colors to create the green and so naturally it's going to blend well with blues and yellows um, because it came from that as a root color. See how much more intense the orange is here than it is on the example that we're using for the straight orange color. Um, so one of the things that that tells you is that blending colors rather than using a single color or coloring, that's like coloring book coloring, um, is better than um, using just a single color. So if I want to make this orange a little bit more intense or I want to neutralize it, for instance, I could add um, a little bit of blue to it and I'm going to start to get some browns and things like that. So the rest of this color wheel here, I want to figure out where the rest of my colors go. I have this kind of pinkish color at the end and um, I have, I think that that's black. Uh, let's see. So this pinkish color um, is an example of moving towards white and we're going to say mixing all the colors together creates black right in the middle and adding more tint to every color or adding white to it is going to make it lighter and lighter so that's on the way that way out towards white think of each one of these colors just has um, a range of shading going this way and then tinting going that way. Tinting is adding white, shading is adding black until you have all the colors mixed together creating black. So we are going to mix all the colors together here in the middle and see what happens. Um, so I'm going to take black over here and put that right in the middle. Oh that is a brown actually or brownish black, I'm not sure. Uh, but so what I'm going to do to see if I can make a, more of a black rather than a brown, I'm just going to make this filled in all the way in the middle because you're going to get brown tones all the way in the middle and I'm try to put a lot of pigment down. There we go. And then I'm going to here put a little bit of orange on top of that brown and see what it does. And over here I'm going to put a little bit of yellow on top of it. And over here I'm going to put a little bit of green. And blue. And the purple. And then we'll do red. And then in the very center, I'm going to mix all of those colors as evenly as possible. So we're going to do red, orange, yellow. And that's okay if things start to bleed. That's what happens with watercolors, blue, and purple. And when we mix all those colors, if you mix them at perfect, you know, perfect intensity, it's going to start to become um, very, very, very dark brown and turn to black eventually. So let's see what happens if we mix the red, blue, and yellow in the middle. Red. Blue. and yellow. And there we start, there it is, we're starting to get black. So there's your lesson on color and color wheel. 
you're going to get all kinds of shade. This looks like a tie-dye t-shirt here in the middle. You're going to get all kinds of shades of browns um, and neutrals in the center when you start to mix that with your brown. Um, remember, this is the brown that we started off with here. Well, it's mixing with a little bit of green now because I've got too much water on the paper. Um, but uh, the whole point of this is to start to get a sense of how the colors mix if you're using watercolor, if you're using color pencil. So this doing this where you're making it sure you're only using the primary colors in this one and using the full mix of colors in that one, you can start to see how those how those how those look and how those blend. Um, in another lesson, I'll show you how we're going to create color compositions, analogous, complementary, um, triadic, tetradic, um, and uh, and so on.